Hey Rollers, I live in Canada where everyone loves hockey, maple syrup, toques, and beavers. Okay, this is the Great White North, okay, on the map. Some of us also love jujitsu, and we were having a tournament in Red Deer, Alberta, when this dude, straight from Brazil, came to show us a thing or two. How would us Canucks deal with an actual black belt Brazilian on the mats? Stick around. His name is Cowan, and unfortunately, I missed the beginning of his role with Sky. I'll pick up the narration with Cowan looking for an open guard pass, but then answering the Delahiva by stepping back and looking for control of Sky's left leg. He managed to pull free, but then Cowan threw his left leg over and attacked the heel hook. Sky was able to spin free, but Cowan immediately took the opportunity to work to the top. It strikes me just how calm he stays in any position even against a strong opponent like Sky. He just finds good positions and reacts perfectly to the movement of his opponent. There's a good example of this coming up where Sky tries to spin out and Cowan surfs on top until he lands in full mount. He had Sky's left arm trapped and I think he was hoping to slip in a triangle choke when he rolled to his back. I'm not sure what changed his mind but he released the triangle and they were moved back to the center of the mat. Cowan didn't waste any time scooping under the leg, opening up his guard, and inverting. Sky was wise to the threat, so he spun away and came back looking for a guard pass. Cowan used some slick footwork to expose Sky's right leg and threw on another heel hook. Again, Sky rolled out, and again, Cowan took top position. They reset again. And this time, Cowan didn't seem interested in passing the guard. He let Sky get to his feet, and then he sat down. Sky launched an attack with a scary looking toe hold, but he didn't control the body, so Cowan moved to take the pressure off, used his other foot to kick free, and then got top position once again. You can't see what Cowan was doing with his legs from this angle, but he was trapping Sky's right arm and setting up a crucifix. He was threatening a choke, but the real issue was the armbar style pressure he was generating on Sky's arm. And he got the tap. Man, and look at that arm. It's huge. His next opponent was Travis, another athlete with a considerable size advantage. Remember that this is an absolute division, so you can get some pretty serious mismatches. Cowan decided to fight from a seated position. It seems odd to accept a bottom position against a larger opponent, but Cowan had no intention of carrying any of Travis's weight. I'm guessing from his body language that he wanted to get under and wrap up a single leg X. Travis pushed forward and threatened a pass. I appreciate how well he used his left arm to control the hip and prevent all kinds of issues. With a guy like Cowan, you're basically tiptoeing through a minefield and Travis knew to be cautious. He tried the old pin the armpits and score a standing pass move, but Cowan opened up and had a good shot at scoring a calf slicer. Travis didn't want his calf sliced, so he dropped to his hip. They both processed things for a while, and then Travis put both feet inside the legs for safety. You're going to get another look at that cool footwork that Cowan used earlier to elevate Sky's leg. He used the same technique to isolate Travis's left leg. You gotta appreciate the strong defense Travis used here. He closed the distance around his left hip so that there was no room for Cowan's heel. Cowan tried to find a higher foothold, but Travis would have none of this. He almost scored a pass here, but it's hard to settle in when your knees and ankles are under constant attack. Leave me alone! The leg attacks continued fast and furious, but Travis knew how to twist out of danger and keep his knee line clear. After fighting to keep out of his leg knots, he tried to ditch the scene, but Cowan chased him down and caught a body lock. After the reset, Cowan wove his leg in and used it to off-balance Travis. At this point, I would have been tempted to throw hooks and seat belts and hope for back control. 
Cowan was a bit more patient, content to maintain the position and wait for Travis's next move. When he tried to stand, Cowan used the same technique and managed to pull him down again, this time with more back exposure. This time, Cowan turned it up a notch and fought for back control. Travis made him work pretty hard for his second hook, but eventually he landed it. You're probably familiar with the standard position for hooks, the mechanics of body locks, and this sage advice. Do not cross your feet, it's the worst thing in the world. Cowan used some kind of hybrid where he crossed at the calf inside the legs. It provided him with enough control that he could focus on working choke positions. Things weren't looking good for Travis, but they were about to get worse. Cowan managed to trap his right arm, so he had to fight both of Cowan's choking arms with only one of his own. Cowan must not have felt like fighting for the choke, so he didn't actually attack the neck. Instead, he secured a Kimura grip on the left side and started cranking on the shoulder. He used his feet to maintain this dominant position. Notice how he added control by flexing his ankles to secure the arm trap and control the hips. Once again, he was in a great position and he patiently waited for his chance to slap on the sub. You can see Travis is trying to calculate his best move. Most coaches would just say, Bro, you f***ed up a long time ago. It's so bad now that you're going to have to work really hard. Uh, thanks a lot, coach. Honestly, I don't know what advice I could offer to Travis right now. Maybe, hang in there, or maybe, yeah, you got him right where you want him. Cowan got a bit more aggressive with his torque on the shoulder, and this led to the chance to extend it for an armbar. With this win, he was off to the semifinals. That goes in the Are you ready? Let's get it all! The, the next opponent that he faced was Hufafa. This was the smallest opponent he faced, but don't count him out because of that. He was no slouch having earned two submission wins against heavier opponents to earn this spot in the semifinals. I'm not even going to try to give a detailed narration of this next series. Basically they tied each other's legs up in knots and figured out how to roll and invert to avoid any snapping. They eventually untied themselves and kicked free. Hafafa tried to use Cowan's elevating and isolating move against him, but he defended by bringing both legs through. Another scramble broke out, and this time it looked like Hafafa had a toehold. It didn't seem to bother Cowan much though, and he did his best to control those crazy legs and keep top position. He fell back on a leg attack, but this was obviously a familiar world for Hafafa, who casually found grips, inverted, and then hunted down a leg attack of his own. It's really hard to keep someone like Hafafa pinned down on his back, because he never gives you a chance to settle into any kind of upper body control. You can see Cowan giving it the old college try here, but Hufafa used solid frames, continually re-engaged his legs, and inverted to avoid the pass. His great defensive movements led Cowan to settle for another leg attack, this time a straight ankle lock that was no real threat. Another inversion and he was on the attack again. This time though, he left his ankle exposed and Cowan wrapped it up and turned to put some torque on it. Before Hufafa could tap, he felt something pop. This is something nobody wants to see. I hope he's all right. By winning these three matches, Cowan had punched his ticket to the final of this stacked division. In my next video, I will show what happened when he faced the beast from my last video. If you haven't already, take a look at his trip to the final here and hit the like and subscribe buttons. Also, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. See you next time. Thanks for watching.